Spirit is calling. Spirit is calling. Spirit is calling. Calling me home. Spirit is calling. Spirit is calling. Spirit is calling. There's no subject on the planet that is more distorted and more varied in terms of the way people respond to it than the subject of death. And so if you were to say to many of those people exactly what you have come to know about it, they wouldn't understand. And if you say to them what they think they want to hear, then you're out of concert with who you really are. And so we think that the best answer would be, this feels like such a private thing. It's private and personal to each of us. And it feels to me, you could say, this could answer all of them. It feels to me that this is a gift or an opportunity for each of us to understand something that really matters to us and just leave it really general like that. Because if you get into the areas, no death, they'll think you're crazy, even though there is no death. If you say every death is suicide, they'll think you're out of your mind because they don't understand about law of attraction yet. In other words, you just can't win in this. And really the thing that is of greatest advantage to everyone is that there are three things that happen. It does cause you to focus more upon the eternal nature of your being. It makes you contemplate what's coming next. It also causes a focus upon what is. And so you could say something if you wanted that for me, it makes me feel better to just think about where this person is going rather than what might have caused that decision. But just keep it really light and easy and it will blow over so much faster than you would ever understand. It's important not to see yourself as clumps of energy. You are a stream of energy. So in the same way that you are here in this physical body now, the larger part of you is non-physical and always will be. And so sometimes part of that focus comes into a physical body, but it never all comes. It's not physical or non-physical. It's non-physical and sometimes some of it is focused physically as it is with all of you. So if you think in terms of streams of consciousness, it's like Abraham is not a clump of energy. Energy. Abraham is a consciousness that law of attraction is gathering consciousnesses together which makes it feel like it is a consciousness or a personality but it's a stream of consciousness and it varies depending upon what's being asked in any moment in time you see and so a very productive thing to understand about someone who's just made their transition and not just ever having made their transition is that they are infinitely and eternally interested in what they were about when they were here. So as co-workers, you still have access to their expertise, to their understanding, but the difference between who they are now as they are now non-physically focused and who they were when they were in their physical body is that they don't have any of their negative habits. They've left all of that negative stuff behind. And now they are pure positive energy. And so there is a tremendous amount of benefit that they can give to you. From our point of view, the biggest advantage that you have when you know someone who's made their transition, if you really care about them, is that it causes you to look for them where they are. And if you are to find them, you have to look for them where they are, not where they have been. And once you sort out that simple difference, then you are tapped into the eternalness of life then you are not only tapped into the eternalness of them but you tap into the eternalness of yourself as well so it takes the sting out of what you call physical death there isn't any death there isn't any ending there's just ongoing 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 and so it's a wonderful thing when someone makes their transition because now everything that was in their vortex they are now realizing completely and 
they still have interest in what they were about while they were physically focused. And that's why you could tap into their artistic nature or you could tap into their musical nature. And so you have access. This is what you want to call infinite intelligence. There is infinite intelligence. There's unending intelligence on anything that matters to you. And when you begin looking there for it, think of all of the history of everyone that's lived. Think about all those that you care about. Think about those that you are led to, those that you want to read about. Understand that the reason that you want to read about them is because they are active within you in some way because of some interest that's active within you. There is nothing that you cannot be or do or have and you are never on your own about it. The continuity of life is not someone being born and someone dying and then somebody else being born it's not generations handing the physical baton off to one another that's not what the continuity of life is the true continuity of life is that you're here and then you're non-physically focused and you're still interested in what's going on here it's the non-physical intertwining it's a non-physical inspiration it's the non-physical that's what keeps you all all of us moving together that's what causes everything to move forward the physical stuff that you're learning from one another is inconsequential in comparison with the inspiration that you're receiving from one another and how delightful it is when one of you stands in a place of connection and allows someone who's been interested in that scientific endeavor or interested in that music project or interested in anything that's going on in this planet in some way who has now made their transition and here you are now focused upon it allowing them to focus with you and through you how exhilarating it is to the non-physical cadre when you receive some inspiration from the group that is projecting it how delicious it is for you to be the manifester of all of that thought you know when you say oh I just got the best idea we want to say yeah and where do you think it came from <laughs> you are the receiver of it you are the interpreter of it in other words Esther teases she teases because she knows Abraham has a lot of knowing and she likes knowing that she can feel that knowing and that she is translating it into something that is meaningful that's what you're all doing all the time from non-physical you see By the river of eternity There is joy, there is peace, there is beauty On the banks by the river of eternity Life goes on, life goes on on the banks by the river of eternity There is love, there is light, there is laughter On the banks by the river of eternity Life goes on forever don't cry for me, I am near Not that much has changed Don't cry for me, I am whole I am young again Don't cry for me, shed no tear Call me by my name Don't cry for me, for you see I live again here on the banks 
by the river of eternity Life goes on, life goes on Life goes on. 